what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Poco A5 and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest something OS build and this is the version 1.3 yes I have tried the previous build of this too and there was a couple of bugs I'll talk about the whole experience it's a story you can say I flashed the version 1.2 of the something OS and I moved from the evolution XROM flashing went fine it did give me some kind of red errors and that's normal I thought so I just skip those kind of errors and just leave it to the system and I did set up everything completely fine it went fine and the ROM was perfectly working except inside there was some bugs I'll talk about them also stick to the end of the video but this version 1.3 update came later and this is again the 22nd June 2024 build as you can see from here and I just downloaded this particular update and I tried to actually dirty flash it because I was already on the older build so I went back to my terrible recovery and when I did that I saw my recovery was gone it was that boot loop of the recovery the screen was flashing like white then it's just straight up rebooting kind of but the fast boot was booting perfectly fine but in system or in recovery it was not booting so yes I get it it is a recovery issue so that's why I flashed the orange box recovery which is mentioned in here as you can see it shows supported recoveries and from here I have downloaded this orange box recovery and I flashed it so after flashing the new orange box recovery I could flash this particular latest build and the dirty flashing and stuff worked perfectly fine and it did boot into the system so from then I have been using this ROM without any problems yes I have seen a lot of improvements with this particular build I have to say from the version 1.2 yes this ROM definitely looks unique if I go into the home screen you will see this is how it looks like because I have customized it this way you will see this is kind of a dock on the bottom and if I open particular apps I can just swipe up just from here and I can get a full dock just like this and if I open app drawer you can actually bring the app drawer from just here this is the launcher launcher present by default let me actually show you here inside home screen settings we are getting this launcher launcher right out of the box and it has pretty much huge amount of customizations as this is the launcher launcher so if you go into the recents you will see this has huge huge amount of customization I'm not gonna be talking about each and everything but you can just notice inside FD customization settings even there is app drawer customization and there is dock there is at a glance and there is also home screen kind of settings a plethora of options are here of course there is double tap to sleep and everything inside general also we have a lot of customizations now let me just talk about one thing the icons let me actually show you I have downloaded this pixel icon pack and I have been using that from play store but if I just switch to the system icons let me just do that and let's just wait for the time being just notice the stock camera the Poco camera and stuff it just looks weird it doesn't have the wide border as you can see but right now I am seeing most of the icons are perfectly fine but anyway I have been using it with a pixel icon pack no problems with it and this launcher launcher does have really cool kind of feature in the settings like you will see the Google kind of animation of Android 15 like if I just go back a little bit just notice how quickly it fades away and if I just leave it right here it will go into the general and if I just bring it back as you can see I'm back into the settings just notice how beautiful this animation is in my opinion this is really one of the best things about this launcher launcher and yeah it looks really really cool so it's enough talk about the stock launcher to the left of the home screen we of course have the Google discover page you can change that and swiping up of course will get you to the app drawer and swiping down will get you to the quick sending panel these are the toggles that I have added you can notice it from right here the 5G and Vault and stuff everything is working fine with my Geo sim no problems and even the widgets just notice animation this is how it looks like you also do get this pixel launcher but don't just use it because it just looks like this I mean who uses this old kind of look of the pixel launcher I can't so I will just go back to the launcher launcher for now and talking about the power menu in the quick setting panel and stuff this is how it looks like of course there is advanced reboot and I can directly reboot the recovery if I want to and there is of course the screen recording and stuff but there is only this device audio and microphone radio no newer kind of features there is the show touches option on the screen that's it there is no HEVC recording or stuff like that but you can actually toggle the always on display from right here no need to worry and there are more toggles and if you edit and add more toggles there are these many amount of options now this dock it's really really interesting it is a little bit buggy because it is in beta so I am not complaining about this launcher of course if you have used the launcher launcher earlier you should know it and here you can just tap on a particular icon and it will just straight up open you can do it from anywhere this is just really really interesting yes it takes a little bit time to get used to it but yes once you get used to it it's very handy you can open whatever apps you want to from right here just by swiping up 
and the animation definitely looks cool and 100 mode and stuff everything works but this dual kind of pill bar looks a little bit weird of course you can hide that upper kind of pill bar if you want to the recent panel for me looks like this we can take a screenshot we can go into the lens and clear all tasks if i want to but here the gemini is not there properly like if you just swipe up from the corners yes it will bring you the gemini and it will work like this but tapping and holding on the pill bar or something like that it just doesn't bring you the circle to search kind of thing of gemini so that's how it is so inside about phone this is how it looks like and in my opinion this definitely looks really cool the animation of this something os if i go into the android version section of course we have the android version as 14 and here we have the security patch of may 5th 2024 not quite june yet and we have the stock kernel of the 5.10 android 12 kind of kernel it shows for some reason i don't know why what's up with android 12 in android 14 we have the build number right here in the system panel this is how it looks like again the animation looks really cool we have the gesture settings right here quick loop and camera and stuff is there we have the navigation mode in the settings of it we have the swipe to invoke hesitant left edge right edge customization we have this hide gesture bar option so if i just hide that as you can see that weird looking pill bar the double pill bar kind of thing is hidden and we have the three button navigation right here we have the one handed mode as well and it looks cool we have the press and hold power button action changing option and the swipe click screenshot is of course working fine share edit delete and the capture mode kind of feature is here we have the quick torch as well you can use it we have the quick pull down prevent ringing screen of gestures is of course there and there is the wake device option for double tap but you can also change it to toggle flashlight let me actually show you how it works okay so double tap to sleep is not there on the status bar i guess but if i just double tap as you can see right now it brings you the torch or it turns on the torch right here if i just unlock and if i just change it to wake device so if i let me show you so yes as you can see right now it just wakes up the device so you can change it again between these many options so that's really cool we have the double tap on fingerprint sensor as well so if you double tap on the fingerprint scanner you can toggle between these many features you can customize it too so that's really nice also we get a system updater and here it shows something OS version 1.3 so this is the latest update as of right now and there is the thermal profiles and you can change the thermal profiles to these many options for particular apps now in the settings panel this is how it looks like there is a lot of like really cool animations just like inside this bluetooth settings just notice how cool this bluetooth animation looks like the network settings and stuff just notice these cool looking animations everywhere there is the clone apps and stuff you can clone particular apps like you can have two accounts of whatsapp or anything like that also flash notification features and stuff everything is present no need to worry but the customizations of this rom are not that huge i'll talk about it in the later part of the video now let's talk about the battery settings this is how it looks like and really cool animation again and we have the performance mode right here so you can turn it on while you are gaming or testing a benchmark or something like that there is the battery usage settings and the battery percentage enabling option you cannot really change the battery icon or here we have the charging control and if you just enable that there is the charging mode and stuff yes charging control does work but charges a lot slower when i compare it with the other roms in my opinion the battery information here shows everything like the charging cycle count the battery temperature and the voltage also the battery maximum capacity and the other information that you want to know now here let me just talk about the battery life with the aqua battery app that i have tested with these are all estimated numbers and with those you can notice i have been getting about eight and a half hours of screen on time and the screen of here shows as about 48 hours and the combined use shows as 12 hours that's just too low in my opinion but these are all estimated numbers and in the health section for me the battery health shows up as 87 percent which is decent i would say and it has been i would say about a year that i have been using this device and with the original battery i'm using the battery life overall i have no complaints i'm totally happy with this battery life that i'm getting in this rom and here are the fast charging numbers let's talk about the stock camera of course we are getting the poco camera and there is the ultra wide angle lens working perfectly fine 1x 2x all the options are working great portrait mode and stuff everything is here and as you can see the front camera and stuff with the portrait mode working perfectly fine all the modes like night mode 64 pixel mode everything is there and in terms of videos you can go up to 4k and 30 there is no 4k 60 because it's the poco camera so that's how it is but you can of course go 1080p and 60fps if you want to with the rear camera and even with the front camera you can go up to 1080p and 60fps as you can see so yes you can shoot 60fps videos with the front camera too that's nice in the documents mode of course you can shoot enhanced mode photos and we have pro mode there you have the video mode as well and you can go up to again 4k and 30fps if you just swipe up there is the panorama vlog short frame kind of thing and the slow motion time lapse ai watermark all these kind of features are there and of course you can also install gcam if you want to the whole video is there in the description 
Now let's talk about the basic stuff. Well, it passes the basic integrity and the device integrity. So banking apps will not be a problem in this particular ROM. The IR Bluster here works perfectly fine as you can see. And in terms of DRM info, it shows as L1 here. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos without any problems. This ROM also offers the Google Pixel-like unabated photos and videos backup. So that's nice. And in Google Play Store, it shows as device is certified. Now let's talk about some weird things about this ROM. In the latest build of this something OS, yes, a lot of apps were not working in the earlier build. But right now, all of those has been fixed. Except for one app that I have faced, like this Tata new app, it's just showing that this app cannot run because the environment is not secure in this ROM and your data may be at risk here it shows. So this is really a like warning kind of thing that this app is actually rejecting in this ROM and I'm not even rooted. This is just the ROM right out of the box, like flash it on your own risk, I would say. Also, if I go into the security settings and in the more settings, there is no app lock as you can see. So I would say there should have been an app lock, but this ROM simply does not have an app lock, but that's how it is. Maybe in the future updates, we'll get that. But as of right now, we do not get any app lock. One more thing is that the privacy kind of features are simply not present in this ROM. Like one privacy feature that I use in most ROMs that in the lock screen, I cannot really access the power menu. I can just stop accessing the power menu or I can just stop accessing the quick setting panel from the lock screen. But here you simply do not get that. You can actually access the power menu from right here. Also, you can access the quick setting panel from right here. You can turn off Wi-Fi without even unlocking the phone. So yes, that privacy kind of feature is not present in this ROM. Now inside security, we have the device unlock and in the settings of it, we have these many settings. I have two fingerprints added and right now I'll just double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. And let me show you the pickup gesture. And here, if I just pick the device up, as you can see, the ambient display appears. And if I double tap to wake, it just works flawlessly. And here, if I just tap the fingerprint scanner, it just unlocks. Let me try one more time. So yes, the fingerprint scanner speed, it's very fast. No issues, as you can see. There is no animation, it seems, from the like screen off. But yes, it's a very fast experience overall. And if I enable the always on display, yes, I think then there will be the animation. No, it just straight up unlocks. As you can see, there is no delay. It just feels very fast, I would say. And there is a slight bit of haptic feedback whenever you do that. Now let me just quickly set up the face unlock. Setting up of face unlock is done and this is the face unlock settings. Right now if I just double tap to sleep and double tap to wake and point the device towards my face straight up unlocks. There is no swipe up needed from the lock screen and you just point the device towards your face and it just unlocks. So very fast experience with the face unlock again. But there is no app lock in this particular ROM. You have to keep that in mind. Now let's talk about performance of this ROM. Well, as you can see in Chrome, it shows 120 FPS and I have that adaptive kind of refresh it on. And with that, I would say overall performance of this ROM, it's really great. I did not face any kind of issues. And even in Twitter, there is no lags or stutters here and there is no memory leakage kind of issue over here. It just switch in between apps without any problems and it's just straight up flawless experience I would say of switching between apps in my opinion. So in terms of daily driving performance you won't be having any kind of issues over here that is pretty sure no RAM leakage issue or something like that. So yes in terms of overall daily driving experience this ROM is good. If you can live with this launcher launcher then definitely it will be a right pick for you. And here are the performance benchmark that I have tested on this particular something was built. Inside sound settings, this is how it looks like. We have all the spatial audio kind of things and all the sound settings kind of stuff. We have this media kind of control and we also have the dial pad tones, screen locking sound, charging sound and stuff. And we have the per app volume control. Even the Dolby Atmos is here and we have these dynamic movie music voice kind of profiles. Even the presets you can customize from right here. Then we have the surround virtualizer and all these other settings. If you're a pro audio file or something that you will definitely enjoy over here. We have the bass enhancer, volume leveler, all these things. And in terms of the volume panel, this is how it looks like. And you can expand the volumes output device. You can switch it to speaker or your Bluetooth headphones if you're using one. In the display settings, this is how it looks like. Again, the animation looks really cool. The adaptive or auto brightness here is actually working. No need to worry. Inside lock screen, we have the use device control shortcuts and we have the ambient display right here. And there is the pickup and there is raise to wake. And just with the pickup option, you will have the pickup just working perfectly fine. And here we have the screen timeout, the prevent accidental wake up, dark theme, you can schedule it and change it into the pitch black mode. That's what I have been using. We have the icon manager, we have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. kind of icons right here. We have the colors. I have been using it with 
saturated but there is also the rgb control full in depth and we have the standard the original p3 srgb all these options then we have the high touch polling rate and the refresh rate you can have it on 120 hertz and with adaptive we have the screen saver and the full screen apps are there and you can force particular apps to full screen so this is good and in the wallpapers and styles this is how it looks like and there is the android 14 kind of lock screen clock styles changing option plethora of options are of course here and i have been using with this particular clock but you can also go with other clocks like this ones and we have even more wallpapers from here and if i go into the on device wallpaper this is a wallpaper that you will get right out of the box and if i go into the home screen there is the app grid settings up to five by five then the icon shapes of course you can change it between these many icon shapes and we have the icon packs as well then we also have the font changing option and there is a lot more like the harmony os and the google sans oneplus sans etc but the nothing dot font is not there so yeah that's how it is very limited kind of customization again now let's talk about the customizations of this rom here inside something OS, we have the play integrity first and it will actually show you which device it's like spoofing to and you can update the play integrity from right here so this is really nice and inside spoofing we have the hide developer option so if you have enable developer option and if you want to hide that from particular apps you can just select that particular app and the developer option status will be hidden from that particular app so that's nice but for some of the apps it just doesn't work like the tata new app i have enabled that here i have enabled that also but straight up it just shows this app cannot run because of the environment risk kind of thing so yes that's how it is we have the google photos unlimited kind of backup option we have the spoof google apps option as well so you will get the pixel like kind of features in here and we have the spoof games option as well let me go back inside interface we have the boot animation changing option over here so if you just click here you will get the googleish then the dot and the pixel kind of option and it will actually show you for how it will look for your device so the Googleish one will look like this. The dot option will look like this, the nothing dot kind of experience. And this is the normal pixel like experience. And this is the boot animation with the dot. So this is really nice. We have the network traffic indicator and we have the show volume panel on the left side. Inside system, we have the ignore window secure flags. Then we have the allow package downgrade, block ads option, and then there is the about section. That's pretty much it about this particular ROM's customization as of now. Of course, it is very minimal. I think they will add even more customizations in future. But as of right now, these are all the customizations that we'll get. So in my opinion, if you ask me personally, yes, this ROM is very unique looking. It has really unique kind of features like this bar and stuff like the dock kind of thing but overall my experience was not bad but it's just not for me i feel but overall it's a good rom i wouldn't say it's a too bad rom or something like that in my opinion it's a decent rom for the poco f5 you can definitely try it if you like the features of it so do share this video out with your friends if you liked it give this video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kdnx signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye, -bye now